like to do now is introduce Larry. Um, Larry Logeman, owner of Executive Express, has over 30 years of experience in business. Um, his business model is built on creating a positive customer experience called transportation relaxation. Logeman is a member of five different chambers of commerce and is a frequent guest speaker. And now I'm going to turn it over to Larry for his presentation today with dealing with difficult customers. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm glad that you got the message to get here early. We knew we'd have a, sell, a sold out room. It's hard to park and then you got to go through and eat. And uh, here we are in just a beautiful timing because it's only 12.07. So for a two hour presentation that we're going to wrap up <laughs> into 50 minutes along with uh, comments and questions, uh, we'll have some fun here today. So um, you are here because uh, you have customers. Notice that the title of this, it does not say how to deal with difficult people. Different presentation, go to that. But what's the difference between just a person and a customer? This is that audience inter <laughs> inter engagement. First question, number one. What's that? Money. Money. Customers are paying us. So it is significantly different than how to deal with difficult people. So um, really, I kind of have a subtitle here, and that is turning a difficult, difficult customer into pure profit. And how can I possibly say pure? How, pure meaning 100%. But if you lose a customer for life, you have nothing. You have no profit whatsoever. It's gone, but if you can somehow convert that and now they're back. You didn't have them, right? Because they were going to be gone. So now that you have them back, that's how I interpret it as this is pure profit. If we didn't do things the right way, we've lost them. That money is gone. So it really does get to the basics of profit. Losing a customer costs us money. And these are just simple terms. You've probably been at numerous other uh, presentations of this, but the little difference between hard costs and soft costs. In a hard cost situation, that would be the cost of that event that that customer was involved in, in your product or service, and let's say you're going to refund them their money. So if you went to a restaurant, you didn't like what they were doing, and they, you, know, you, you just spent $10, and they say, we're going to refund your money, or in a sense, not charge you. That would be the hard cost of that. But the soft costs are what's so much more important, and that is, all the other costs of losing many, many customers over that lifetime. Because I can't remember the great hair commercial that taught us this phrase 25, 30 years ago. But when you tell one person, they tell others, they tell others, they tell others, and it grows and grows and grows, right? So that would be uh, the thing about soft costs. So we did a little survey for this meeting. And some of you may have completed the survey. I thank you. We tried to make it very simple. It was just three questions. And there's a lot of you in here that didn't do the survey. And there's actually people that aren't here today that did the survey. So it's always interesting how it turns out. But just as a recap for those of you that, uh, that did do it, here was the first question. Have you ever had a bad customer experience at a business that prevented you from ever doing business with that ent entity again and even more importantly, you never said a word. So you've had a bad experience somewhere and you've decided to leave them and you just didn't tell them about it, okay? So 85% of the people that did this survey for today said that they've done that. Would you think that's a high number? Does that make sense to you? That you've had a bad experience, you just walk away and you never use them again, but yet you've never said anything. I see some people shaking their heads. It's kind of a common thing because you think to yourself, I don't have time for this, why bother, right? Question number two though, have you ever had a bad customer experience at a business that when you complained to them, they did not resolve your issues to your expectations, which therefore made you never use that business again? So now you had a bad experience, but you've actually said to yourself, I, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to talk to them. And then they offended you again in some way. They just didn't handle it right. Now you're never using them again. And 100% of the people that did this little three question survey, 100% of the people said that they've done that. So first of all, I thank the people 
who actually took it upon themselves to say something to management ownership of that company. I use this phrase all the time in our company. I have the ability as owner, I can fix anything, but I gotta know that there's something wrong. So when someone actually has a concern or a complaint comes my way, I thank them. I thank that person for actually telling me about it and of what's going on. So the third question though is this, have you ever had a bad customer experience at a business that when you complain to them, they resolved it so well that you have become a lifetime customer. 85% of the people said they've had that experience. So again, that's great that the people have actually said something, and it's even more outstanding that the company handled it in a really positive way that suddenly the issue, whatever it was, has kind of gone away and they have become a raving fan and they're there for life. So really that's what we're gonna get here to today. We all have customers, and we'd be fooling ourselves to really think that all of our customers are happy 100% of the time and they're telling everybody else. It's great when we get that positive customer feedback, but there are people that aren't happy. I mean, last year, we had a great year. We, did, we transported over 60,000 people at Executive Express last year, but they all weren't happy. Things happen in the travel business. Flights get delayed, they get canceled, airlines lose your luggage, and so everybody's mad anyway. So that's why at Executive Express, we really try to convey this whole thing about transportation relaxation, because we know the rest of your trip's gonna stink. So we want, we want our trip you know, to go well. I mean, with flights and, and, and hubs now changing all over the place, I got an email from a good friend who's a customer last night. We got her down to the airport on time. And then when they get there, their flight out of Minneapolis was delayed by an hour and 15 minutes which, to San Francisco, which they then had to get a connecting flight to go to Oregon, where they live. So by the flight being delayed in Minnesota, it already missed their connecting flight, and they were being told, you have to spend the night in San Francisco. So we take them down to the airport in the morning, and already by noon, they know they're not getting home. They've got to wait an entire day. So she was in a bad mood, but at the same time, she sent a thank you little note uh, to us because what we did our part so well. Isn't that cool? But we, it's what happens. Things, things go bad. All right, so we're going to do a little story time here. And this is how it's going to go. My bad. I'm going to tell you a bad service story that happened in my life. And while I'm doing that, I want you to be thinking about your bad story. And someone in this room is going to have enough confidence to be able to stand up and tell that story. You can choose if you want to use the name of the business or not. But in reality, when you've had a bad experience, do you withhold the name of that business when you're talking to your friends and relatives? No, you don't. That's reality. But you can choose whether you want to do it here or not because maybe that business is in the room. Or the other thing that we have to realize, you never know who you know, who the other people know. You might be bad-mouthing the person that's sitting next to you, their best friend, and, and they don't even know that. So just keep that in mind. But again, reality is we don't hold back when we're telling our friends and relatives. So here's my bad story. My old, I have five children from 21 down to 11. My oldest, who's now 21, the experience was about his baptism Sunday. How long ago was this? Right, long time ago. So we had relatives in town, and because we had a little baby in baptism, my wife decided she doesn't want to necessarily cook for all these relatives, so we went out. We went to a local restaurant, and there I think there was maybe 18 to 20 of us, so we're in two longer rows. And so my father-in-law, who has passed away at the, now, but at the time, you know, he was diabetic and we're sitting there for a really long time. He needed some food, you know. So the first thing is we just, can we get some bread or crackers, anything for this man? He needs something while we're waiting. And so the response was, okay. You know, already it's like, oh, sorry to bother you, but this man needs something or we're going to have a medical problem. Anyway, so he gets some bread 
and the rest of the meal didn't go well either. But the most interesting thing is my wife had a chicken sandwich. And when she bit into the chicken sandwich, there was a twisty tie, a green twisty tie. So imagine in the kitchen where they get their bakery buns or whatever, they're coming from someone, there's a twisty tie. So, you know, alert, we bring the server over. Server says, oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> Not necessarily the best comment to make. So of course, what does that do to the other 18 people? We're all checking now. Everybody's looking at their food. How many twisty ties can we find in this group of 18 people? Anyway, so we finish our meal and we're ready to pay. And you're kind of thinking there's going to be that little conversation like, sorry, you had a bad experience. Can I get you a piece of dessert? Can I, you know, but there was none of that. So my wife decides she is going to complain, not me. It was another local business in town, very near the business that I was working at the time. But my wife decides to write a letter to the management of this establishment. So a few days later, the owner of the establishment does not contact my wife. The owner contacted me and said, how dare you? You're in the service industry. You know these things happen. How dare you put your wife up to writing me this letter? So now I'm mad because this was not my issue. It was not my issue at all. So I then go to that establishment and ask for a meeting with that owner and explain just that. This isn't my issue. I mean, you should be apologizing to my wife. I'm not going to apologize for something like that. As you know, he kept trying to say, as you know, in this business, things happen. You know, she should have never wrote the letter. So I share this information with my wife and now she's mad. She makes the statement 21 years ago. I will never go back to that business again. And to this day, she has never been back. Now, she's told that story with the name of that organization to many people in her lifetime. Many people. So that's the impact of a bad situation that is not handled. Because it's not just my wife, but there were 20 people there. My guess is those 20 people haven't gone back either because she's made it a mission, right? <laughs> she was an angry person and she was not taken care of. So she kept telling these people, don't go back, don't go back, don't go back. My guess is when a new person moves into town, she says to them, don't go there. <laughs> but you guys are kind of chuckling, but can you, that's reality. It happens. We have so many choices in this community and a lot of different there's lots of, of people in here that kind of compete against each other. We have choices. So if no one complains, you know, then they just go on to another choice the next time to get that service done. So that's my bad story. So now, who else? Someone tell me their bad, oh, she was quick. <laughs> she was quick. So this is Nikki. Tell us your story, Nikki. So we went out to eat and took my kids. And <laughs> You know, they ordered the kids' meal. My daughter ordered the kids' meal with the side of fruit. And, you know, that's her thing. And we got it, and, like, all of the fruit was, like, super hard, no flavor. It wasn't ripe. It wasn't ready. So we asked if, you know, if there was something else that she could get instead. And the first thing the server says is, well, if she just has to be child and she just doesn't want to get it. <laughs> I said, uh, no. If, if it were up to her, all she would eat for supper is fruit. Mm. So we left upset, wrote a letter. I do have to give them credit. They made some changes. We still haven't been met, but I do have to give them credit for making changes because corporate headquarters actually called us and said that that particular server would be attending some customer service training. Okay. And that Are they here today? <laughs> oh, okay. No, no. And that all of their stores were switching to non-fresh fruit because it is so hard to manage. Okay. Good. So you had a problem. You complained. The first person, the server, did not handle that well. 
but good for you for taking it further. So again, if you've been in this situation and you're here today because you wanna handle this situation better as a business, keep that in mind, all businesses need you to complain. If there is a problem, you have to just, you owe it to the business to at least try to, to get them convinced. Okay, good story. All right, we're gonna reverse this. We're gonna go into the positive story and one of you can tell a positive story, okay? So I will tell you a story about, um, uh, I'm gonna convey it how uh, it was one of our customers and I've had lots of good stories, but this one is really interesting because this is a customer from a very prominent business in town that uses this quite a bit and the customer complained. There were problems and the customer didn't really like the way that the driver, in our, like a server, that's our first point of contact, handled that. The customer decided to write an email and actually there was a response to that email that again the customer didn't like, but ultimately it got to me. And there's a few layers in the middle there of how that all works, but ultimately it got to me. Um, so I decide to take the person out to lunch and we're talking through it. And what has resulted in that, his, his company, let's just say, used to give us this much business a year. And as a result of that meeting and hearing some new ways to do things, we're getting this much business from that company. All he wanted was someone to really listen and tell those things, like this is how we're gonna change things. So that's just one experience, we'll kind of get into some details about that later, but anybody to wanna share a really good positive, if you were been a customer, oh, quick, wow, that was fast. Um, I spent about 18 years working in the retail industry, and I was in store management for Herbergers in Montana, and I had a young kid that worked for me, that dad was the um, store manager for the J.C. Penney's down the wall. And he called me out to the sales floor one day because he had a very irate customer who had bought a pair of jeans, or her husband had gotten a pair of jeans for Christmas, and they didn't fit, and he didn't like them. And they had come from a JCPenney's somewhere else in the country. <clears throat> and Penny's had told him, we don't carry that brand here. We can't help you, we can't do anything for you. And she, on a just weird whim, walked into Herberger's and said, do you carry these, can you help me, can you do anything for me? And this young kid had enough sense to know that maybe he couldn't make that call, but if he called somebody from management. So I said to her, well, they're Levi's, we don't carry them, but if you can find a pair of jeans here that your husband would like, I would be happy to do an exchange for you and I'll give you whatever I can figure out as a fair price for them. She left the store and she said, I will never shop anywhere but this store first, and if you can't help me, I'll go somewhere else. And so I said to this nice young gentleman, well, you're going to have an interesting conversation with your dad when you get home tonight. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because we just stole one of his customers, and she's ours for life, and there's nothing he can do mm -hmm. at this point to get her back. And, I mean, that, that kind of came from our store management on down. That was always the premise is do what's right for the yep. customer. But that one was really kind of cool. Excellent. And again, great story. <laughs> And there's lots of those out there. And this really isn't intended to be just a customer service presentation because we're, we're really on the opposite side. We're, we're talking here specifically about how to deal with that difficult customer who's, who's had a problem. Um, but they're all over the place. You have them. Um, but again, a th question to be thinking about, and it's another seminar for another day. What systems do you have in your company because I, I share this all the time with our leadership team because we don't have a good system, but we talk about it. How would you really know if you lost a good customer? I mean, I'm not talking about the customer that you know by name that comes in every day and they're almost like your best buddies and you go out to happy hour, but a good regular customer, do you have systems set up somehow, some way that suddenly they're gone? I mean, again, in our business, we might have people that travel with us every week, you know? So they're making reservations online now. They're so accustomed to it. So we've lost that conversation. They're just doing it online. You know, but unless drivers come into our office and say, you know what? I'm just one driver. I do one shift a week out of hundreds. But I used to have this one person and I don't see them anymore. They're not going that far because they're thinking that maybe that person just goes on a later flight every week now 
and so that person's on a different run. So I struggle with this a lot. How would we really know? So when that person has, when they're a good customer, but something bad goes wrong and they leave you for life, if they don't talk to you, how are you really going to know? Again, unless you recognize them. I mean, maybe there's someone in here I could go up to them and say, hey, Cindy, you know, what's the deal? I, I haven't seen you very much anymore. You're not using our company. And now we've opened up a dialogue and she nails me. She's ready to, she's ready now. <laughs> you know, because I asked. You know, and that's okay. I'm opening up a situation. So, again, just on some quick other tips. Uh, to me, when you are in front of somebody, we have this incredible thing that we can't control. As a human being, you cannot control your nonverbal behavior. So when I ask you and I say, so Vicki, how'd it go on your shuttle last night? You pause for a split second. You pause and you look down. I know something happened. Because if it went really well, she's going to look right at me and go, oh boy, it was great. Your driver was outstanding. But that little tiny pause says a lot. And now I've opened it up. I'll come back and say, no, really, really tell me. If it wasn't, you know, a thousand percent that we exceed your expectations, tell me why, what's up? You know, because if it didn't go well, I can fix things, I can fix things. So it's really important to be able to follow up. And that's hard. You don't get nonverbal behavior a lot of times in emails. And we'll talk about that too in a second. So let's, let's uh, moving on here. Technology moving on. You want me to hit the power button? Just once. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Many staff members would have said, oh, they're set up. I'm going to sneak out and do some more work, but not Whitney, man. She stayed here for me. Okay, so for the purpose of the rest of our conversation, I want to just put some numbers to things. So I'm going to use the number of $100 as our baseline. So what do you get for $100? Well, I put down casual dinner for four. It's not very easy anymore. You know, if you have something to eat and maybe a drink with it for four people, it's probably going to be more. Or a business casual outfit, another pair of slacks and a shirt or something. Uh, Executive Express for a couple people going to the airport. About two tanks of gas, depending on your car. An iPod or a new smartphone under a contract. Otherwise, it's way more than 100. <laughs> For any of you that didn't do the insurance and you lost your phone and you had to spend 500 bucks, you know what I'm talking about. So those are just some ideas. And if you think to yourself, oh, that's not like me. That's just not my company. Well, I've thought of you. So what about me? So fill in the blanks for your company's product or service. You just have to think about this. In my company, we provide blank and it's retail value or some kind of the value is this. My guess is a lot of you in here aren't working for Boeing, that your product is an airplane that's going to cost whatever, $9.2 million for that plane. Imagine being the salesperson. If you sell one plane every couple of years, you've, you've made it. It's not that. But you've got to put some kind of, you've got to get your mind around the concept of this type of customer. How much have they given you? What's their potential if you lose them for life? So that's why I threw that in there. You can just decide how you want to handle that slide. There we go. So that $100, I look at it this way, $100 per month. In our business, we have people that do this every month, sometimes every week, multiple times. So I'll just say $100 a month times 12 months in a year is $1,200 a year. But we're talking today about the lifetime customer. So now I want to take that $1,200 a year and I just threw in a number of 20 years. Because that's not uncommon. I've now lived in St. Cloud for 23 or 24 years and I have been customers of certain organizations for that long. Um, so you can easily make that 30. You can even make it 40. But in this particular example, so this example of this customer, we're now talking $24,000, right? Now, <clears throat> so we have to start talking about what does everybody else do? You may work in your company right now and you might be responsible for this and of course you can go to another seminar and everybody's going to say everyone is responsible for customer service. You know, don't just turn it over to the customer service manager or the owner. Everyone needs to take care of this. But think about this. What does everybody really do? 
you know, when there is a difficult customer, do they email? Do they phone call? Do they send a letter? If this is you, my guess is you're not here. <laughs> I mean, it, really. But you know there are companies out there that do absolutely nothing because they want to hide from it. Oh, that's going to be uncomfortable. You know, and they just hide from it. So even these things, let's look at it this way. What does everybody else do that you can do better? If we're talking email, what you can do better is do it immediately. The moment that a person sends an email and it pops into your email box, if you're working on another project and that email comes in and it's not flattering, I'm, nothing that you can do is more important than right now. So that customer knows, you, you hear them, you feel their pain, and even if your response is, thank you so much for telling me about this situation, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go talk to this person, and this person, and this person, and we're gonna get back to you, and if you don't hear back from me in a few hours, I'm, you know, but yet it, just doing something is better than nothing at all. Same with the phone call. If you get a voicemail because you didn't take that call right away and it went into a voicemail and it's an unflattering situation, do it immediately. All those other people out there, they're gonna think about it for a while. They're gonna go talk to others. And then maybe they'll call back after business hours so that they don't actually have to talk to the person, you know, leave a voicemail. But you're better than that. So you could do it immediately. Letter, I love hand delivering things. It blows people away. It just absolutely blows them away. If it's a local business in town and someone has been frustrated with that, I, I would, if they wrote a letter, I'd respond to the letter, but I literally would, I'd drive across town. I've driven far, actually, to hand deliver something. If you hand deliver something, think of it this way. Think of the power of walking into a business and there's the gatekeeper, there's someone there, and you say, I'm here to see Mr. Jones. Uh, he sent, he was frustrated at our company and I wanted to hand deliver our apology letter. Is he here? It's powerful. You're standing in front of that, they're gonna get on the phone. They're gonna find out if Mr. Jones is there because you're standing in their lobby. And if Mr. Jones is there, Mr. Jones is gonna come down because he thinks this is the weirdest thing. You mean they're hand delivering? their apology letter, now you get a face-to-face. -face. I do a lot of speeches on colleges and I do this with, with kids who are looking for jobs. Don't do what everybody else does and just put a resume in the mail or just email. Go there. Go wait in the lobby and find somebody that will talk to you. Why not? You're not employed yet. What do you got to lose? Go there. So if you do this, hand deliver. Again, if other people do nothing, to do it better than nothing, you're just, you're just not here. One thing that you can do to make you the best. What can you do now with this person who is a disgruntled customer, but what can you do now to make you the best? See these little dots means there's something coming. <laughs> Here we go. Predict the complaint. So even before that person complains, I want you to think of this. I use the example of preventative medicine. You know, you're a human being and someone tells you, you know, after the age of 40, you should go to your doctor every year or every two years, you should get this scan, you should get that scan. Sometimes you listen to people like that and you go. <clears throat> We've all heard these great stories. Someone's perfectly healthy, they go in, they get this CAT scan, the doctor finds something that's abnormal and it's a little bit of cancer, but they caught it early and with this particular program and then they go on to live happily ever after for a long, long, long time. It's because of preventative medicine. So when it comes to customer service, how to handle the difficult customer, the best way to handle the difficult customer is to handle them before they've become a difficult customer. So in our business, and we're not perfect. I, I'm glad we're videotaping this today because I have to keep teaching my own staff this. We have a little thing and uh, little paperwork that all of our drivers have to fill out and certain expectations. And if they've met all these things, they do all these check marks that you know, they think it's been a perfect run. If there's anything that happened on that run, 
that is a little bit out of the ordinary, we have an incident report. And I tell all of our drivers and our reservationists, do an incident report when, if something happened that didn't go perfectly, write that down. Because I don't want to be surprised. I would much rather hear from one of my own employees that this customer on the phone just didn't get it and they were getting frustrated and I think they hung up on me. I want to hear from the employee that the situation didn't go well because it's what you can do with that information. So we, we live in an environment at Executive Express with mechanical things. These are machines. Machines can break down. For some reason, we live in this world that there's no real warning with alternators. <laughs> you know, and I'm not a mechanic, but you, know, you can have a vehicle going down the road and that's it, you're off to the side of the road. So if we do have a mechanical breakdown, even though we may feel that we handled that perfectly, meaning the driver called and literally there was another driver in an empty vehicle three minutes away, they pulled over, they reloaded, and they, everybody got to the airport and they got there on time and nobody missed their flight. I say let's predict that we're going to have a complaint. And why not call everyone on that vehicle after their trip, say, hey, I understand on your way to the airport last week, things didn't go well. I heard that we had a little alternator problem. How do you think everything went? How did it, you know, that type of thing. We're having that type of conversation. It's preventative medicine. Because I, if we only go by what our employee says, because the employee many times is going to say, I don't, everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. All worked out well. Because there may be hearing from, th in our situation, maybe there's, 12 people on a vehicle, and maybe three people went up to that driver and said, thank you so much for getting us here on time. Great, thank you very much. Three people did. Nine people didn't say a word. And it's that person that was in the back of the van that was really frustrated that maybe that was their very first time ever on Executive Express. And they happen to get, we get about one, we get one breakdown a year. We, we do 2.5 million miles. One breakdown a year. But if that happens to be the very first time we ever had that customer, I want to prevent the complaint. And that's a whole new direction. But if you could do that preventative medicine, so this is, you know, on my little handout there, this is that prevention part. If there was just a couple things, I would like you to think about, yes, does this take more time? Absolutely. Are you potentially opening up a wound by you being the, the aggressor and calling the customer? Yes, you are, and that's what we want. We want them to talk to you. So it's a preventative measure that absolutely should do this. So these are just some little phrases. It's my understanding that you might not have experienced our best. I use that phrase, like, oh, you know, last year we did 60,000 passengers and, you know, 99% of them think we're the greatest ever, but I'm really sorry that you weren't one of them. I'm sorry that you didn't experience our best. By being proactive with that, they're actually like, wow, I didn't even think I was, I didn't even think I complained. I mean, isn't that, that would be a good thing because we're preventing the complaint. Just look, we want you to have the best experience. It shows that we care. Um, my expectation at Executive Express is that we do have perfection on everyone. Why, why, who, why would we want to have a goal of less than that? The worst thing that can ever happen in our company is if we miss a passenger, they've made a, they've made a reservation, they've paid us, they got an email confirmation, they're gonna be picked up in Rogers at a certain spot. They're there, ready to go at four o'clock in the morning and our driver goes right by. That's a bad deal. And we take it seriously, man. We have committees, we have task force on this, we analyze everything because that's a really bad deal. And it's how we handle that situation because we do go, we go a lot. So there's another vehicle coming down the road and if they're not gonna miss their flight, it usually works out that we pick them up. But even if they didn't miss their flight, they still were filled with anxiety. It's dark out, it's four o'clock in the morning. It could be 20 below, where's the driver? That's that anxiety moment. That's not relaxing. If you have teenagers and they're supposed to be home at midnight and it's one, you're anxious. You're wondering what's going on. They think it's no big deal, right? But you're anxious. That's what we're trying to prevent. So that's that prevention part. 
And just think of how hard it is to do that, to really be thinking about your product or service in that way, that as we speak today, somebody might not be having the best experience and we want to proactively go after them to talk with them about that. I want to talk to them before they talk to their spouse. That would be the absolute best. We actually don't call people in the vehicle though, you know, because then there's a cell phone call going on and everybody's hearing this conversation. But, you know, I've called people shortly after that. All right, so how to recover for ROI, return on the investment. So a difficult customer, there is a opportunity there to somehow save yourself lots of money. So I really want you to think about it as return on investment. You spent 15 bucks here today, and some of you paid that on your own. Some of you work for companies that they're paying for that, right? They're looking at it as an investment. They're either doing it, they're sending you to make you feel good that they, they want you to feel important because they're investing $15 in you <laughs> and your education. But in reality, they really want something out of it. They really do. They want to make their company better and you just might be the one person that gets to solve all those problems. Over here they have four people from the same company. Over here they have four people from the same company. Another seminar, but I'd like to say you shouldn't do this. You should be sitting over there. You should be sitting over here so you get to know new people. <laughs> called networking. That's another seminar called professional networking. But uh, All right. So here's my thing. What can $2 really do? So I'd like any of you that have some cash right now, pull out $2, please. All of you that have $2, if you, if you know you don't have single dollar bills, don't pull out a five, don't pull out a 10, clearly don't pull out a $100 bill because then people are thinking, why do you have so much money? <laughs> okay? So anybody that has a couple dollars. This is our little experiment. I'll do the five. Because <laughs> I didn't have singles. Okay. Touch that. Put it in your hand, please. <laughs> if you went to your boss, supervisor, or let's say you're the owner, or whatever, but just somehow think about that, and you said to whoever that person is, I learned a way to turn this $2, this $2, this $2 into $24,000. Would you, Mr. and Mrs. Supervisor, allow me to spend $2? If any of you work for someone that's gonna say no to that, we're hiring. <laughs> okay, come work for us. Because here is the power of this $2. Okay? We talked about this in reading that nonverbal behavior. It's the meeting in person. It really does exist. So we talked before about hard costs, soft costs. The easiest thing to do is just refund their money. And there are some people in customer service positions that may think, well, we've given you your money back, so be happy. And really, that's just an easy thing. And then you'll, they'll tell the supervisor, oh, you know, there was this upset customer. We refunded their money. Everything's okay. I don't believe that. I don't believe that everything's okay until I know that they're going to use us again and they've come back. So the power is in this question. And when you use this $2, which we'll talk about in a minute, when you're in person, you're meeting with this person in person. They're across the table with you. When you ask a question like this, it doesn't have to be this exact words. What can we do to get you to be a customer for life? And I'll even go, I'll do the refund thing. I'll tell them, look, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, it's easy. I, I'll, I'll give you 50 bucks right now. I'll refund your money. You're going to get your money. No, no questions asked. You're going to get your money. But now that we've covered that, let's go down. Let's talk about this. Because I really want to know, because if I just give you this money, you might never come back anyway. You just get your money. 
So I really want to know, what can we do to get you to be a customer for life? It really opens up a good dialogue. And as I shared with you the story that I had earlier, I asked that question. Now, I chose with that person to spend more than $2, and I took them out to lunch. So it might have been a $25 investment. That $25 investment has turned into thousands and thousands of new customers already. That doesn't mean yet over a lifetime. I did that last fall, I met with that person, and I know that we've got a tremendous amount of business out of that company. So he, we went from a customer who was gonna tell his company to never use us again, to now we've got that turned and we're getting more business out of it. So there's your million dollar question. $2 turns into $25,000 for a lifetime. Now, we live in a community that has lots and lots of places that you can spend two bucks to get that personal conversation. What's a really common place that's gonna cost you two bucks? What's that? Caribou. Caribou, excellent. One of my favorite places. Can't wait, someday, someday, might be another 40 years, but I really wanna be a Caribou franchise owner. In airports, here's an Executive Express counter, right next to it is the little Caribou kiosk. <laughs> We somehow can use employees in both ways. I even looked into it once, but they will not sell a Caribou franchise for one individual. You have to you know, get whatever, five or 10. So I use the phrase a lot. Can, we, can, I, can, can I just buy you a cup of coffee? I'd really like to meet with you. And even if you, don't buy, if you don't have coffee, that's okay. Can we meet somewhere else? But I just really want to get together with you. When, when is a convenient time for you? Where do you live? You know, this type of stuff. I did this recently with a customer in Iowa. We, we have an Iowa branch as well. Upset customer. He doesn't really know that I go to Iowa every month anyway. Um, but I said, you know, I'm going to be coming down to Ames, you know, next week. Can I meet? I'd really like to take you out for a cup of coffee. There's this new brand new Dunkin' Donuts that sells coffee. Do you know where that is? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to go there. Great, great, great. So we meet for a cup of coffee. Now this guy actually said, I can't believe that there's a company that the owner would come and meet with me over a cup of coffee. Now, in my heart, I'm like, I'm coming anyway. I have business here, I've got a company, I'm gonna meet with my staff, and I love coffee. So I go to that Dunkin' Donuts every morning that I'm in Ames, Iowa. So this is not doing anything different. It's what I do. But he doesn't realize that. He thinks I've made this special <laughs> trip. Since that time, this was a, a, it was, it's a senior living community, and they were doing private charters to get people kind of out of town, go do something different. And uh, it was a terrible, terrible, hot summer day. And again, mechanical issue. The rear air conditioner went out. The front air conditioner of the vehicle worked, but when you got 14 people that are all kind of maybe in their 80s, it was getting kind of warm. They were not happy. So we had to fix that. So it's easy for me to give him his money back. Sure, take, it was $250 for that. Take the 250 bucks. But what can we do to get you to be a customer for life? You know, that type of thing. And we've worked through that. And now they are customers. So the big thing to learn from today is make sure that you're talking to your supervisor yourself or whoever you need to get permission from. But I'd really like you to think about the power of that $2. For some of you that know that you have a difficult supervisor, you might be a lucky winner today. <laughs> because you might not even have to use your own money. Because I do happen to have some Caribou gift certificates <laughs> with me. So I went to Caribou this morning. Every day I go to the Caribou over by Crossroads. And Rich and Tony are the two kind of managers there. And we talk customer service all the time because I think that organization is outstanding at that particular store. If you've ever been there, very, very busy. But man, they engage, they talk to you, they make you feel like you're their friends. And, you know, and I, don't, I use a caribou card. So I don't, have, I don't have cash with me a lot of times and I always kind of feel bad, you know. So last Christmas, I took a lot of money. I really felt strongly about this organization and I, and I pulled Rich aside as manager 
and I said, Rich, here's this money, and I want you to figure out a way to divide it up amongst all your staff. I, wa I want them to know that I appreciate what they're doing as a customer service model. It's just a phone over there. Um, what's been interesting about that is how many of those employee level people at Caribou have thanked me since, and two of them in email. Um, just kind of a cool thing that like a month later. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't that, maybe a month ago, I'm at the Caribou Coffee in Monticello. Happens to be two blocks from my accountant. Why not go to Caribou first? And literally, I go in there, and this lady at the counter says to me, you're Larry Logeman, aren't you? Yeah, I was in my Executive Express close. Thank you so much. I used to work at, that, at the Caribou store up at Crossroads, and I got a tip from you at Christmas. And now she's in Monticello. So it's just one of those things. So there's a great place for that. There's lots of room over there. If you're ever in one of those situations, invite someone to Caribou over at Crossroads or whatever one. But there's, not, there's lots of room at that particular one. And tell Rich that you're there to help to talk to this customer, and he'll think that's kind of funny. Because we talked about that this morning. We talked about their customer service model. Because a couple weeks ago, um, they, they, there was a bad encounter there. And this guy could not, the customer just could not be pleased. Just, and, they, and they were bending over backwards you know, to help this customer. He just could not be pleased. And we had this whole conversation about that. You know, what do you do when someone just can't be pleased? And I, I keep saying they can, it's just not in this environment yet. They're not ready to be pleased, but don't drop it. Don't, do you know the person's name? No, well, okay, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. It was not quite a regular, you know, but when you become a regular somewhere and they know your name, it's kind of nice to be able to get a follow-up sometime. All right, so my two most important things that I want you to remember today, and then we're gonna open it up for questions, and then we're gonna do drawings. One is preventative measure. Think of how challenging it would be if you actually can talk to that customer before they turn into a difficult customer. Because wouldn't that be the easiest thing? This is all about how to deal with difficult customers. But what if you had no difficult customers? Because you're doing the preemptive strike. It's hard, but I know you can do it. You're up to the challenge to save your company. And then the other thing is the power of a $2 investment. Don't think of it as just saving the moment. Really think about it as a lifetime customer. You've heard both good and bad today. You've heard how easy it is to never go back, ever, ever. We're talking 20, 30, 40 years of being so angry about something that you never go back, especially when there's other choices, right? There's other restaurants, there's other dry cleaners, there's other auto dealers, there's other body shops, they're out there. So we have to assume that we potentially could lose a customer for life. And if you don't have systems set up in your company, keep working on that. I'm trying to do it myself. How can, we, how can we do this through technology? So preventative measures and then the power of a personal conversation. For those of you that are on the younger side and you, you really think that it's within your normal culture to be texting people, please, 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 please. Do not text back to someone who's complaining. Don't even go down that path. And, and, and it's even a, a struggle with any written conversation is you just cannot read the nonverbal behavior. You can't do it in an email. You can't do it, certainly can't do it in a text message, even because there's little shorter words now. Um, and even in a letter. It's just hard. It's really, really hard. I mean, for those of you that are in sales, you know, and you've got a big deal on the line, you think to yourself a lot, I need to go meet with this person. I need to sit down and make this proposal. You know how hard it is to do a proposal over an email. So if, it, if, you, if it's better for you in sales to get the deal, it's certainly better for you to prevent the deal from going away for life. Questions, comments? Can you get that door price thing while we're, yes ma'am. happened to us. We actually didn't do anything wrong. The, everything was perfect. Her daughter didn't become homecoming queen, so she wasn't unhappy, and at that point, everything was wrong, and it was our fault. And she was in our face, and I was totally wrong. 
I didn't know what to do. There was nothing wrong with the job we did. Um, but she came in the day after homecoming and was screaming and, I mean, literally screaming. Mm -hmm. um, well, as I said earlier, I would look at it this way. They're not ready yet. The anger is so much, they're just not ready to receive forgiveness and grace. But that doesn't mean they're not ever. And so you said homecoming means, means last fall. It's been six, seven months. Call them now. And just say, you know, we had a bad experience seven months ago. And I know you are really angry. You know, I just got this gift card. Can you and I go out for a cup of coffee? <laughs> and see what happens. Just see what happens. I mean, you know, we get rejected a lot in life. You know, think of how hard it was to ask someone on a date. You know, at, but at, I, I'm, I'm married now. You know, it worked. I got rejected. <laughs> I was rejected, rejected, rejected. And then eventually now, 25 years later and five kids, look what happened. So I, that's what I just say. They, I, don't, I don't have another answer that's better than other than they, that doesn't mean walk away from them forever. Because again, if you never engage with them again, it could be 20 years from now. And they're still having that negative story about you and your organization. So even though it happened, there's nothing wrong with sending a Christmas card. You know, just keeping engaged with that person. I mean, it, it, obviously, if they start threatening legal action, you know, <laughs> if they say, if you send me one more communication from your company, I'm putting a cease and desist order, you know, or whatever. But that's all I can say is just keep trying. Because none of us want to be the brunt of the 20-year bad experience. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Um, when you were talking about in front of them, one of the things that we have found is, and I have said this for years, it's much more difficult to be angry and mean to someone in person than it is via an email yeah. or even a phone call mm -hmm. or a message. So oftentimes, I come across somebody who's really upset that things did not go the way they should have. We'll just drive over yeah. there, and one time we did it, and when when my boss got there to show up because there was a problem. And we hadn't done it, but there was a problem and the reception was we were supposed to take care of it. And so when she showed up in person, the receptionist said, oh wow, you're brave. No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she was like, she was an owner and she got him calmed down and the situation got taken care of and we're still stuck with it. Beautiful story. It's, this is hard, folks. It is hard work. Um, it's easier just to let them go, blow it off, and go about your day. Uh, and again, another seminar is, you know, how much it costs for that you're spending in your company in marketing to get new customers. When for two bucks, you could, get, here's $24,000 in savings if you just can somehow convince them. It's not gonna work every time. If you have 10 of these scenarios in life and eight out of 10 work, eight times $24,000 is a lot of money. So sometimes it's just not gonna work. But the, that power of that visit is gonna be it's going to be outstanding. Yeah, you suggest when at the heat of the moment, just let them go then and let them blow it off. Well, yeah, if, if, if it's, if it's getting... There's no right response. Right. Sometimes they're, they're, they're just not ready. They are so mad. It doesn't make a difference what you are going to say. If you would say, you know, because again, if you ask the question, I know you're angry, but what could, we, angry. What, could we, <laughs> what could we do? What could we do? to get you to be a customer for life. And they say these words, nothing. I will never. Thank you for that feedback. I hope that we can talk again someday. Because you're right. I mean, if, if you, you're the only one that can judge if it's going to go nowhere today. But that doesn't mean it's nowhere forever. I mean, it really, you just got to try again, you know? I mean, again, you could be rejected on a date in high school. 32 years later, you run into each other in the same community. You're both, your spouses have passed or whatever and now all of a sudden you're dating, 32 years later. So there's no harm in going back to these people years later. Okay, so here's what I have. The first thing we're gonna do is I do have three $5 Caribou coffee cards to give away. And so would you be so kind, Amanda? Sure. I need three cards out of there. One. Rock On Trucks Incorporated. Ooh. And he's got some important numbers on the back. You know, it's always good. Isn't, you know, business cards are great scratch paper. 
Some of you have those cards that are too fancy now and you can't write on them. I encourage you don't use those cards because I take, that's another seminar on networking. Use your own <laughs> business card. Anyway, who was this? This was Jeff. Where's Jeff? Here you go, Jeff. Pass that back right behind you, please. And then we have um, Randy from AAA is over here. There you are. And Sarah Olson from ePromos. The, the ePromos table's up here. <laughs> if anybody needs anything from ePromos. Now, I had said to those that took the survey, um, if you took the survey and you weren't coming to the event, that you would get a value of $20. But if you took the survey and showed up at this event, it would be doubled to $40. So to save some admin time, we are going to go with the honor code system. Randy, can I have your card back? Because we're going to make you still eligible. Okay. No, or did I keep it? Oh, you put them all back in there for us? Okay. Not that card. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to draw a name, and then you have to, you have to be honest. And we're only going to do this because I've only got one more minute. So uh, if you took the survey and you're honest about it, you'll get a $40 thing. So here we go. Allie from Grand. Hi. Did you take the survey? Did. You didn't take the survey. So do you feel bad that you just lost 40 bucks? <laughs> okay, so, so next time someone says do this survey for money, remember this. <laughs> that you just lost four, not two, not five, $40. We're gonna do one more. And, wh and Whitney knows who these people are. Jenny from ePromos. Did you take the survey? But not, just some other random survey. The survey that was in the link. Yeah, she did. Did she? Whitney says, yes, okay. There you go. So you get, it, you get $40. And what this is, because it's really not $40 cash. I, as owner, I have the ability to give these away when I want. <laughs> this is a $40 certificate to any service of Executive Express, completely transferable. So if someone's going to come and visit you, you can give them this and they can use our service. So thank you very much. That's all I have for all of you. Good luck with this. Enjoy your week. It's one o'clock. We're supposed to stop at one. <laughs>